Alright, we're here in game number two. Let's keep in mind of what we learned last time. No, air dragon rushes, six sims, and kid boo assist. The setups he does. Okay, he's in the corner. What do you do? Nice swap. Beautiful bait right there. Very, 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 very good bait. So, you, you did pick up that he will do two things after a vanish in the corner. He'll either flip. Okay, so, okay, so yeah, yeah, interesting. So, in the corner, when he's in the corner and you vanish, he will do either two things. Well, technically three, depends on what's, what's happening. He will either mash, reflect, or option number three, which just depends on what's happening, is that he will wait and wait for you to vanish again. That sounds weird, but it's something we do at at the tournament every week. It's it's, it's suspect, but he'll either mash or he will reflect. And you made the right call because you notice he loves to reflect after a vanish. You made the right call of just baiting it and then doing a two in for a max damage punch. That was good. Keep that in mind. Now, also one of the extra layers is that yeah, if it worked this time, but keep that in mind for next time. He might not reflect next time. He might press a button next time and catch you in that backdash you did. Uh, for the 2M. Oh no, not backdash. Uh, he might just catch you in the in the um, animation of the 2M of the of the 2M startup. So keep in mind of what they got hit by last time. That also goes into another mind game. That I'm gonna keep doing it until you learn to not to not get get hit, get them get them hit by it. And um, I said, I don't, I'm not I'm not a Vegito player, but I'm sure fighting D-Ray, you learn a lot of new a lot of new Vegito combos. Like another way to end this combo. You can just vanish into medium to keep them in the corner. Screen position and corner is very important in this game. Corner will always be better than mystery for, for pressure. Backdash. Keep that in mind. He backdashed. He backdashed this time around. Think about what do you have to counter that backdash? You can 2M. You can vanish. You can key blast. You can instant air dash forward. You can heavy. You know, think about what you can do to counteract that. Especially since Jose Rana is something he loves to do a lot. He will do it all the time. Because it's, it's actually something I taught. That's, that's the first thing I ever taught Game Boy. Was the, was the backdash in the 2 after a vanish. And that's the tech he, he, uh, he uses the most. Nice pressure. Ooh. Okay, so we're, we're gonna we're gonna beef up these block strings a little, just a little bit. Instead of just doing the neutral jump and the air dash heavy and into the falling heavy, uh, it's I will say it's harder since Kibu is such a small character. The timing is hella tight. But let's say you were doing against Goku Black or um Vegito, instead air dash medium light sword key blast. Medium light sword key blast. Keep that in mind. Adds a ton of pressure. It gives you a little bit of meter, as well, a little bit more, more meter as well. Since that's very important in this game now. And it just gives them more pressure to think about. Like, oh man, all the overheads. Ah. And another thing, if you decide to go, that's that quad. That's a quadruple overhead. You can counter. So you do that. So let's say in this particular situation, you call in Go Tanks. You do the overheads instead of that medium light sword, um, five finger shot. As you call it Kid Boo during like the sword of the five finger shot, you overhead. So there'll be a there's a slight gap. You know, and depending on how well you can time this, it, it'll be down your frame perfect to get it absolute. But you can time the overhead so much that there's like a one frame gap between the time the Kid Boo assist hits and the time the overhead hits. Like so if they if they get hit, automatic conversion. If they don't, they block it. Guess what? You still gotta, you still gotta hold the mix. And plus, if they just blocked all those overheads, their instincts will probably just block low, right? So overhead, open, open them up for free, or you can dragon rush. Well, if you want dragon, you can't really do um the kid boo thing. Or after all those quadruple overheads, five kid boo, just two him. You know, you got, you got, you got options to expand these these block shots. Because what you did wasn't, because what you did here wasn't bad, it was just extremely basic. And that was a nice bait on his part. Oh, that should be dead, that's dead.
Alright, so we lost Fujita. Now we went to Kibu and Gotenks. Ooh, that was a good back hit. Do be wary. Okay. Do be wary of the Candy Beam and the Vanish. Because that's not true. Candy Beam and the Vanish is not true, people. Keep that in mind. That's why Kid Boo is such a difficult character to play these days. Because everything he does is pretty much unsafe. Like, you can't 2 H in the Boo Ball because you'll get reflected. You can't 2 H in the Candy Beam because that can also get, get um, reflected. You can't Candy Beam into Vanish because that's also reflectable. So you have to be very, very careful with what you do with the Kid Boo. He's all about base. He's even more of a conditioning character now. He's all about baits and staggers. Since his block strings aren't as strong as they used to unless you have the proper assist setup. Which I'm pretty sure you can do it with um, Go Tanks. You can find a way to combo, not combo, but do his regular block string into the arm ball for a true block string, much like, with G much like Game Boy does with Kid Boo and the um, Goku Black as assist. So if you don't know that, learn it, because that you know arm ball is one of the best mix-up tools in the entire game. So might as well just let the guy who has it use it by himself. Nice punish on on the beam, but, but we'll talk about how how to counteract that just spammy beam full screen later. Because it is very difficult to to deal with, but there is a set way to actually do it. Now that was just a that was, that was a, just a superior neutral neutral decision making. Okay, you notice what he what he's doing right here. What he's doing every time. The moment he enters the air, he's always going to double jump, falling heavy, no matter what, because that's one of the best buttons in the game, especially in the air. So you so your thought should be I need to stay out of that range. All right, I need to either stay back and wait for him to do it and whiff so I can punish. Or catch him out with some sort of beam or key blast, right? But you weren't you weren't thinking in that in, in that path. So by the time you got hit by the super, so okay, boom, he showed it, he showed it again. So I need to not go towards him. If I go towards him, he's gonna find some way to get into the air than just air dash forward to hit me with with that heavy. I don't even agree with that. I actually just kept him in, in the corner. See, he, he even did it there. Even even on even after he hit the um, the um, super dash, he did it. And there you go. So I also noticed you did you did this a lot. I think you switched it up once against me when I did it when I did it to you. But if you notice that they're going to do it, especially against someone like Game Boy, because Game Boy, it takes him a while to adapt to that change. I'm not, I'm not going to front. But he does Boo Ball. First of all, that was a good stagger with, with um, Boo Ball. I would even consider doing it earlier instead of doing the medium just to light, light Boo Ball. Or light Boo, like, like 5L Boo Ball, you know? But after you do the Boo Ball, because only he's also a kid, a, a, a kid Boo player. So his instinct is to 2H. Is to, is to, um, to Keep that in mind. That you are in a mirror matchup. So whatever you're thinking, he's probably thinking it too. Because that's what he does. He's like, okay, after boot ball, I like to do falling heavy or falling light. So I'm going to 2H to stuff that. What you should be thinking is the exact opposite. Like, okay, I usually do this, but let me do this instead. Instead of doing a falling heavy, let me do a key block to stuff that to stuff all that 2H. That's why mirror matchups are so annoying to deal with, and that's why a lot of people hate them. Because it comes down to just who can think more more outside the box. It's not it's not more so you versus the character, it's you versus the other player. Which I think fighting games should be like that, like you versus the player. But it has a whole nother dimension to the bullshit that one character can do, or not do for that, for that matter. Nice bait. Beautiful bait. I don't think I don't think gonna kill though. You were you were slightly fat first of all, that kind of was hella unoptimized. But um you were slightly fast with it. Instead of doing um the double low light, you could just go straight up into into um 2M. You might have been able to kill if you did the straight 2M. But it don't but it don't it don't matter. We're right here. I think you end up killing black anyway. That was hella unoptimized either way. Don't act like I didn't see that. 
And I do believe you can you can super dash do that. I need to I need to double check. I haven't I don't see Goku Blacks throwing out throwing out key blasts like that. I'm not gonna front. So I don't fully know if you can super dash do his own key blasts. I'm surprised he didn't just, just fucking 2 H you right there. Nice super dash. So note, especially the way he likes to play Kid Boo, he never dashes up towards you. He will always try to stay mid-screen. No, keep note of where they like to play each character. Like, I like to play Trunks and um, Goku back here. Like, back here to right here. I like to play Goku Blue from right here to right here. You know? So keep in mind of where they like to keep their characters so you can space, your, so you can space yourself properly. Now, he likes... Game Boy likes to be mid-screen. Like mid screen to like a quarter screen. It's like if you're like say you're mid screen, he likes to be right here where this pillar is, or like right like right next to just the range of his of his one M. All right, and he will try to stagger you to get you in that range so he can snipe you with it, much like that. So that super dash was a very very good call. Nice Oki setup too. And notice one thing that he always does. I started to punish it in our very last set. But it's literally the one thing he's been doing consistently in all of our sets. Not just a player versus player basis. As so like I do this to counter the uh, counter the enemy. It's more so I do it just because I do it and I don't think about it. Alright, keep in mind. I'm not gonna tell you I'm not gonna tell you what it is. But you should be able to pick it up by the third game. By the end of the third game. You don't pick it up by the end of the third game, then i I'm gonna tell you. Ooh, the clash. Don't forget your minus after vanish. You shouldn't have pressed the button. But the rare leaves don't do it at the end at the end of your own box room. That's just gonna make you minus, even more minus. Mm, and then just and then just the dragon rush. I know dra taking dragon rush is hard is um hard, but you can't really Get on anybody's case for attacking Dragon Rush. That shit is hard as fuck. But keep in mind on what we're learning here. On where he likes to keep himself spaced. And keep all this in my end and the setups as well. And keep in mind of what he wants. If he likes to do on Wake Up. And we'll see if you can, if you can figure it out by game 3 on what, on what, on what um, he likes to do.